Uh, I'm Rick Darling. I work for Altair Engineering. Um, I'm a senior technical specialist there uh, in product development and design. Uh, I've worked for General Motors for about 18 years in chassis development and Milford Proving Grounds, and then I went on to uh, do consulting work with Altair. I'm going to present to you uh, some of our capabilities, a little bit different than what you've heard up to this point from the guys, uh, and some of the things that we can do to help you out in the design of your products. Certainly we do many of the same kinds of things that uh, you've heard about here in uh, simulation, in vehicle development, in design and so forth. Uh, we have all those capabilities and we overlap and then even at times we compete with one another. But uh, we all work together to, uh, to uh, advance the, uh, the products that we work on. This is our vision. And our, our owner of our company, Jim Scappa, uh, this is his vision for our company. And we work on this every single day. We're, uh, we're, we're proud of it. Uh, our products reflect it. Our vision is to radically change the way organizations design products and make decisions. And you'll see that in our products. This is a little overview of the growth of our company. We were founded in 1985 by uh, three automotive engineers. We're still a privately held company. You can see we have phenomenal growth. This year we expect uh, to have gross sales of about $270 million. About 60% of that is our software products that we developed for uh, product design for the automotive companies, aerospace, marine, uh, consumer products, and so forth. Uh, we have over 40 offices in 20 countries, and we now have over 2,000 employees and 5,000 customers worldwide. These are some of our customers in the various uh, areas that we work with, automotive, aerospace, heavy equipment, uh, government projects, uh, consumer products and so forth, energy. Uh, we work in just about every area that you can think of. These are our companies. Our, our, our company is divided into basically six different divisions or companies. Our software, HyperWorks is our primary software that we sell to uh, development and design companies. It's a complete suite of software that uh, assists you in doing all sorts of various design tasks. Solid thinking is a fairly new product that we've developed. Uh, allows uh, folks to actually start to explore the concept of a design, uh, styling, design, uh, renderings, and so forth. And at the same time, they can begin to analyze that uh, design for uh, structural performance and so on of the product. Not just design something Imagine a wonderful looking car or a other product and then find out later that it doesn't really, you know, doesn't really work, you can't engineer it. Uh, PBS Works is our grid computing uh, for running very large computing jobs. Uh, product design, which is where I work, uh, we do all sorts of uh, design tasks for the car companies, for aerospace, consumer products. Uh, most of us guys that work there are, are, car, are car guys, we're gearheads, and that's most of the, most of the project, projects that we work on. Uh, Enterprise Solutions is a, is a cloud-based computing uh, offering that we have, and of course we do staffing, we put people on site at the car companies and, and, and other, uh, other uh, design firms. This is a, an overview of, uh, of the type of work that we do in product design, which is where I work. So, design research, design engineering, uh, simulation-driven design, which is what I'm going to talk about a little bit further today, program management, large programs, and uh, verification and validation testing. So we do things like uh, uh, suspension development, suspension testing, uh, subjective evaluation of vehicles, shock tuning, suspension tuning. Uh, we do all these things within our organization. So how can uh, some of the predictive things that we're able to do help SEMA members uh, improve their products? We can do things like predict chassis loads before you even have the physical property, the physical vehicle. Uh, if you know the roads that you want to run it on, we can do things like profile those roads. We can pull them into our computer programs 
and uh, simulate the loads that are going to uh, occur in your suspension parts. Uh, we can then take those uh, loads and we can do what we call cascading or transfer those wheel loads into the actual components uh, that you've designed. So you're, uh, you're designing a new suspension system or an aftermarket suspension part. Uh, we can tell you what the stress in that part is going to be. We can predict it and show you how to design it better. Um, we can predict FMBSS performance. Some of the other folks here have shown they can also do that. Uh, we work with uh, CarSim, for example. Some of their software is actually embedded in ours so that you can do these things uh, simultaneously. Uh, KNC data, we can predict the KNC data before you actually have the vehicle to test. Um, we can begin to then understand some of the sensitivities uh, in the suspension and the component changes that you want to make. So uh, you want to change a, uh, a component and you want to find out what happens when I uh, retune the shock absorbers or change the bushing stiffnesses. Uh, we can tell you from predictive analysis what the effect of those changes are and what happens as you move, say, a suspension bushing up and down in its stiffness properties, what other things in the suspension and the vehicle performance characteristics that affects. Um, and of course, that typically you know, results in reduced development time for your products. So here's, a, here's a, uh, an image, a, a video. This is a simulation of a vehicle going over a road surface. This is actually a cobblestone road surface that was we profiled at MGA Proving Grounds in Wisconsin uh, that we use uh, from time to time. You're, what you're seeing here is actual the real-time stresses that are taking place in the suspension and the uh, front subframe on this vehicle. So you can see what's actually taking place. This is all predictive uh, analysis. Then we can take those loads and we can simulate a four-post test. So this is a simulation of, of what the OEMs often use to test the durability of their entire vehicle. So we'll simulate that four-post spindle-coupled test to determine if there's going to be problems, durability problems, with the car. This is a, a project that we did for BAE, uh, British Aerospace Engineering. It's a, a Border Patrol truck called the Sentinel. Uh, we had complete responsibility for this project. And I just thought this was a kind of a cool case study because I know there's folks here that do uh, aftermarket off-road components and so forth. So uh, the Border Patrol was having difficulty with their vehicles, uh, not lasting more than about six months on patrol. They were using F-250, F-350 type vehicles. Um, so they, they, BAE Systems decided to see if they could produce or design a purpose-built Border Patrol vehicle. And they came to us to assist them. So that's what we did with this. It's basically a F450, F550 chassis that we modified uh, with longer travel suspension, uh, reinforcements in the frame. Our industrial design group did a complete new uh, a cab and body structure for it. Uh, all the add-ons that Border Patrol folks like to have, gun racks and detainment boxes for the uh, people they pick up out in the desert. Um, and this is the basic process that we go through when we engineer one of these, when we do one of these engineering projects. So we develop an engineering work plan, we, 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 we do a complete planning operation. Uh, in this case, we had styling responsibility. We have an industrial design department within our organization that did all the body styling and renderings and everything for this truck. Um, we did all the design engineering and the prototype release into, the, into their system. And then we built prototypes uh, to test it, and we did all the testing. So here's a little video that shows the performance of the truck. This is at the uh, NATC Proving Grounds in, uh, in Arizona, or Nevada. It's interesting that, whoops, stop that. There we go. Uh, it was interesting that the, some of the Ford guys were out there from the 
from the SVT group when we, when we actually were out there running this vehicle and uh, that did the Ford Raptor. And they were very, very, very impressed with our vehicle. They thought it was pretty darn cool. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit now about component optimization. And I know this isn't quite vehicle dynamics, but it does apply. And uh, we offer what we think is a very unique and uh, a software solution to optimizing components in any kind of a product, whether it's an aircraft, a car, a bridge, a building, whatever it may be, to make them lighter, stronger, cheaper, and faster. Uh, it's called OptiStruct. It was uh, basically developed within our company, and it's based on uh, the idea that if it's based on the idea that uh, you, you can develop all the load paths and constraints on a part based on how you would grow, grow a bone structure in an animal. So if you think about animals, their bone structures are basically designed around the way they, the way they operate, the, way they, the things that they do, and the load paths that need, they need to do that to make them strong. So our software basically emulates this same kind of a process. So here's an example of a front suspension knuckle that was done in this way. And you'll see the way it starts is with a block of material, a package space. And then the software, based on the loads that you give it and the constraints and the design, will begin to nibble away material until it finds what the optimal design is, the lightest weight, strongest part. So you can reduce your design time, you can build a stronger, lighter, lower cost part, and have a competitive advantage at the same time. And you can do it a lot faster than the conventional methods. So here's an example that we did for Eurocopter in Europe. This is a door hinge for a helicopter. Example, the original part weighed 9.15 kilograms. The design process took three months to design that by the conventional design process. Using our, our software in OptiStruct, the weight was reduced to seven and a half kilograms, and it was done in three weeks. That's a radical way to change the design of products. So how can we also use uh, the data to help us develop our physical vehicles? Once we get out in the physical world, uh, and we've got hardware and prototypes. We can use a simulation to start to validate the ride and handling performance of the vehicle. Uh, we can get quick problem resolution by using some of these simulation techniques, some of which Tom talked about and others. Let's say you get out uh, on the track and you've got a problem and you can't figure it out. You can go back to simulation, and we like to do this, and do, go through an analysis and determine oftentimes what the problem is and fix it faster in the virtual world than you can in the real world, whether you're trying to make new parts, put them on the vehicle, try them again, kind of that hunt and peck method. Um, you can verify that the designs uh, will give your customers all the desired attributes you did. And you can predict the durability performance of your products. And I'm going to end with a a little uh, video of a project that we're actually in the process of doing right now. And I kind of called it What If. Um, this video actually is out on YouTube. You can watch it out there. Uh, this is a whole vehicle that we used our solid thinking software and our OptiStruck software to come up with an optimized design for a motorcycle. I think this is pretty cool. I like this. So you can see we started with a chunk of material, just a block of stuff. 
And here is the OptiStruct software whittling away the material and growing what really actually looks like a bone structure that's the optimal design for the frame. Then we do what's called topology optimization. So we begin to interpret that bone structure into something that you could actually make and that actually looks nice. So that's the end of my talk. Um, that motorcycle you'll probably see here next year. We're, we're going to build it.